Expansion of a realm is not solely reliant on the efforts of its ruler. Oftentimes, it's a commander's well-executed battle plan or the collective strength of the realm's army and its champions. Though sometimes, in the end, credit must be attributed to the realm allies. It was a well-known fact that Angermanland's conquest of Chief Boltuf was well supported by the army of Ilvadno, so naturally, we had to return the favor. Everything started with a call to arms in a defensive war versus Sijavara. Unfortunately, the lack of motivation on our allies' end demonstrated Yolvadno's dedication to exploiting our military strengths. Despite this, and as our only ally, their survival was in our best interest. It just didn't stop there. Amidst the struggle of stabilizing our economy and scraping together the gold to claim the High Chiefdom of Lapaland, the Chieftain of Yolvadno decided it was time to follow things up with a retaliatory subjugation war against Sijavara, to which, of course, we obliged. Nonetheless, we yet again threw our allies on our back and did the grunt work. We started with a straight up advance into battle with Sijavara's defending forces and chased them off into the north. This move bought enough time for our allies to recapture their capital holdings and finally enforce their demands. The resulting break in action was well needed. As it is now, we start getting our plan in motion and hopefully start invading Sweden. Hello everybody, S. Monty Gaming back again with another installment of our tribal playthrough, Angerman Land. Before we start things off, let's go ahead and click that like button together. <laughs> Thanks. When we last left off, I was getting a bit anxious because all I wanted to do was take on Sweden and I kept getting sidetracked. But now I feel like we're in the right place to execute on this once we take care of a few of those pesky up front chores. Looking at the current situation panel, it appears we can get our marshal to do some work building control. Also, might as well start making everybody Swedish. Four years is a relatively quick process in any case. Next, it looks like we still have the ability to duel Prince Svend, who's actually quite banged up. He's got an aggravated wound and uh, got lost. Still, doesn't really seem to impact his prowess enough to make a trial by combat viable. So, we're going to go ahead and table that for the time being. It also looks like Margarita needs some instruction. And I was going to give her over to Linda, but I noticed something. Linnea is threatening to leave the realm. I guess the loss of Olaf was too great to bear at this point. Given Olaf was a staple in our realm, I can't stand to see her leave too. So we're going to go ahead and hand over Margarita to her care, and that'll hopefully cheer her up a bit. Now, last thing to do is handle this bit of debt we've incurred from recommissioning our family epic. Looks like Norway's got something going on and... Hit them while they're down, that's my favorite raiding strategy. Scanning their holdings, it appears Prontheimer has a total of 43 gold waiting for us. I need no further convincing, this is where we send the raiders. We'll gather them up in Helgum and... No, we have no raid commanders, so we'll go as is. Yes, of course, this epic needs to be prestige, thank you. While that cooks, we're going to queue up a move order direct to the bigger of the two holdings. And as our troops run off, let's go take a look at Sweden and see what we're up against. Hmm, King Halston apparently has some sort of bad omen. He's not too old, but it's his lack of allies that has me hoping he keeps breathing. His direct heir, Eric the Heathen, seems a bit more martially focused and he's got a wife and stuff, so who knows what we'll be up against in that event. Oh, our family epic is a song and Ileana has discovered a story from our ancestors. It involves a raging ox, <laughs> a euphemism possibly, but we'll let our fans decide. Ileana, write it up. The time saved means you get paid less. <laughs> that 50 gold refund basically removes the need to raid. But we've already got started moving in this direction and hell, it wouldn't be an episode of Angerman Land without at least one pillage. We arrive on our first holding in Prontheimer just as the welcoming committee skirts off into the mountains. <laughs> and speaking of skirts coming off, it appears the time around my daughter has piqued Linnea's interest. A declaration of love? Hm, I'll allow it. With our hearts full and some gold in our pockets, it's time to make the last raid over here in Prontheimer. What a weird route. Oh, and finally, an opportunity to add some champions to our ranks. Alg, how do you do? Uh, what's going on down here? <laughs> Looks like we've got some more conflict going on for King Ashbjorn. It appears Princess Maria has gathered enough support to push her claim on the kingdom. Well done. This could actually present an alternative invasion opportunity. But as I am a stubborn ruler, in my head we've already committed to Sweden, so we're going to see that one out. And would you look at that? This was the first goal I was hoping to achieve before we invade. An excellent epic. This should keep the prestige flowing. 
Yeah, nice. Back up to almost six and a half, which actually means we can restock our men at arms. Let's go ahead and get back that group of managels and then throw on a couple of veterans. Aww, Linnea knew about the scarf I gave Nana a few years ago and offered to slay a wolf so I could have one of my own. I can't wait to wear it. You know, I could always just grow out my beard instead. With the epic completed, Ileana has given me the option to keep her around for a bit. 50 gold though, oh, too steep for me. Maybe we could do something else. Looks like she's a fornicator, and if we had the tribal authority, we would have been able to imprison her. Given, I'm sure she'd most certainly be down for a concubine role. Uh, yeah, so she's technically not in my court, so the best thing we can do is hold on to our cash. I'll see ya. Given it appears Ingrid is single and in my court, we can grab ourselves a new champion. Welcome Suterpeg. You know, I always choose a matrilineal marriage for these, but I'm not actually sure whether or not that's necessary. Oh wait, all this messing around and I forgot about the raiders. We'll send word to the team that it's time to move out and bring home that sweet loot. Oh no, an expired alliance. Yep, it looks like the passing of Davgun the Foolish has us fending for ourselves again. We'll definitely want to correct this before the invasion, but first, let's consider a few things. We're kind of stressed, and for 33 gold we can have a hunt and alleviate a nice chunk of this. But the gods clearly have blessed us with their nectar for a reason. We shall drink away our troubles. Ah. Now for some matchmaking. Callum could use a betrothal, so let's see. What the? Duke Henry is a... Wait, what? Duke Henry is a guy? No. Wait, Callum is a dude, right? Yeah, he's clearly marked my son, but I, I don't see him flagged as homosexual or anything. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm dumb. I was looking at the target's liege. I, you know, I really should stay off the drink. And in any case, it's clear that Rados Lava is an eligible bachelorette and almost of age to be wed, so they should work out just fine. Alright, so now the question continues to persist. Do we declare war? Ah, yep, that 1800 prestige cost. This leads us to think about whether or not we want to wait for Bellum Justum. Uh, you know, still another two more years, and at this point, I feel like I'm done waiting. Let's go ahead and swap into Majesty and get some of that prestige rolling since we're <laughs> negative 1.4. With that additional bonus, we're up to plus three with all the modifiers. I think now I'm prepared. King Halston, I am here to invade your kingdom. <laughs> Finally! Oh, oh wow, it's actually weird seeing a three-digit prestige number. <laughs> Which actually reminds me, I was thinking of upping tribal authority, so might as well do that before I forget. And one more thing before we march south. Let's get our freshly minted ally involved. Thank you for your support, Duke Krutoge. It also looks like we've got a champion wanting in on the action, but... 36 gold, yeah, it's just not reasonable. I don't care what claim you have. We're gonna start things off with the oh-so-familiar march into Metalpid. And actually, giving the adjacent holding to the south, I'm thinking we leave some besiegers and just take that 100 troop hit via attrition to hopefully speed things up a bit. Oh, look here. The boys from Veletia are here to help, and that's a healthy looking stack. Looks like they're going to add some additional siegers to Metal Pad and wait for the holdings to fall. Now, while this goes on, let's see where our next hit should be. Dallas Berg's Lagen appears to have two holdings, but this one in particular has 30 gold. No doubt this is where we're going to strike next. We'll first go ahead and regroup our siegers in Hallingsland, and then go ahead and split off for the next one. Ooh, more attrition. I forgot about that. Oh, I think, yeah, if we go through this neutral territory, we can avoid that penalty. As we move in, I'm always paranoid that when I zoom out, I'm going to see our home burn to the ground. <laughs> in any case, we'll keep an eye on the sea in the east and make sure nobody gets tricky. Nice and smooth. Howling's Land falls uncontested and now we can go ahead and move our other army up to Over Dalarna. And it looks like our allies will follow. Oh, what's this now? We're the cultural head for <laughs> the Swedish. <laughs> Just what I had feared. The king had up and died. Let's see. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a lot of allies. Well, you know, actually, some of them don't seem too impressive, but it definitely wasn't in our plan. And 
Given our gold situation, hiring mercenaries is not really an option right now. So <laughs> let's just keep an eye on the war overview and make sure nobody's joined yet. Wait, who is this kid? <laughs> oh shoot, that's the new king. I clicked on this county and forgot to click on the count's liege. Luckily, I see no alliances, so I guess we're no worse than we were before. The one thing that is slightly concerning is the Swedish army have managed to get lost in the Gulf of Bothnia. I'd imagine that would actually be a pretty tough thing to do. <laughs> oh, great. The kid found an ally and of course it's the King of Denmark. That's a swing of 3,400 troops. <laughs> I'm going to kill this dude. Oh, shoot. That was Denmark's prince. Okay. Let's see if we can arrange an alliance to prevent him from joining. Of course, he's not interested for religious reasons. Fine, we'll go ahead and get some allies on our own. Margarita here can be set up with Galindas for an alliance with Prussia. Now, before we spend the prestige and have them join, we're gonna wait to see if Denmark actually gets called to battle. Avre Dalarna falls and we're gonna shift our forces up. Looks like King Nud is ready to throw down and... <laughs> Yep, seems like the defending forces exceed our numbers for the time being. Let's go ahead and get Prussia involved. <laughs> I wish we could do some sort of sea battle. It looks like these guys have been lost for months and are just starving to death at this point. In any case, they might figure things out once Denmark arrives, so we're going to be careful. Another county sieged and actually no sign of opposing forces. I guess we've got no choice but to make progress on towards the capital. As we set up in Varmaland, I can see the Swedes are looking to make landfall back by Halsingland. We'll just go ahead and head over back that way. Oh damn, I didn't see this big stack following. Now I'm thinking we'll just let this holding fall and then group up and hopefully our allies will keep by our side. Yes! Now these allies know what's up. As we stomp towards the enemies, everybody motivates in unison. A green indicator actually looks pretty good, though I'm willing to bet that's going to change once they're done sieging. Yep, exactly what I suspected. Let's hold up across the river and see if they take the bait. No bites. Now I'm considering crossing this river and attacking without the penalty. But actually, let's go around and hit the siegers from the west. It appears they're not too far into it and we should probably catch them. If we go up north just a bit, we're going to allow time for our allies to move in around the lake and I'm thinking this will give us our best shot. Looking good and yet again, our allies are on point. I think we've got them here. Seriously, look at this beautifully coordinated strike. Sweden, <laughs> you're done. As their armies collapse on the battle, it looks like we're pretty even. But as long as nothing devastating happens, the remainder of our allies should be able to join up and we're going to get this win. Oh, look at this. We're actually winning without the extras, but extra muscle is always appreciated, so we're not going to complain. Yes, that was a big victory. And it'll take us back up to 50% war score. Unfortunately, it also resulted in the loss of one of our champs. And though Fast is super expensive, these sieges have been quite profitable. And I want to make sure we're in top form. We'll grab him and make sure to recapture this holding. We can split off some of the besiegers and chase the fleeing forces to the south. Yeah, there's definitely still room for some battle war score. So let's go for it. 68% with that recapture. I'm going to allow for some of my troops to catch up before busting this fog of war. Oh, look at this. We've got another potential duel lined up. Another fornicator, <laughs> a countess. Yeah, we'll keep that one in our back pocket. I'm not really sure I'll be dueling in the near future. As we sneak up on Scapa, I can't seem to find the opposing forces anywhere nearby. It looks like the AI is gonna do some sieging in Nirik and that'll allow us to just keep moving in. Oh, damn. Looks like one last kiss from Linnea and we slip right back into the friend zone. It just wasn't meant to be. And neither was a break from these pesky defenders. They've gone ahead and figured out how to navigate these waters and snuck up a boat of men north to retake Dallasberg's login for the second time. As Skada falls, I'm now considering recapturing the counties Sweden took back, but yeah, it doesn't look like the reclaimed war score is too bad. So I am curious to see what our war score jumps to with the fall of Nirik. 
we'll keep an eye on that as we move on to the capital and oh <laughs> very nice only four months to bring this down <laughs> yes i freaking told you guys that they were good looks like our little king was hanging out in nirik and my boys got him god these guys are a million times better than yoldvadno ever would have been I guess the only next steps would be to hop on over to his cell and let him know I've got some bad news. And just like that, we now become King of Lapland, uh, Sweden. Where are you? Okay, so clearly I'm still a duke. I wonder who holds the Sweden title then. And, oh, it's not yet created? No, that, that can't be right. Oh, God, it was destroyed. <laughs> I bet it's because I only had one duchy and I wasn't eligible to hold Sweden. Yo, that's actually amazingly badass. We invade the Swedes, take their kingdom title, and then destroy it. Yeah, I feel like that's our style. In any case, this is cool because now I guess it makes sense to do that custom kingdom for Angermanland. Oh, these prices are steep. The prestige should be doable, but damn. 300 gold and that's not counting whatever gold is required to get two more duchies created. Hmm, let's see if we've got any gold lying around in the prisons. No money, no money, and yeah. This dwarf has been around long enough where I know she's got no money either. Guess it's dread time. Wait, why can't I kill her without tyranny? Wow, yeah, like I said, she is useless. Well, I know how to fix this. I'll tell you what. Don't think I hadn't noticed your aging like a fine, very tiny bottle of wine. And you know what? I'm into it. Join me as my woman. Let's pretend I didn't just try to have you executed. And as for you other two, see yous. I guess we're going to need another means for gold. Before we get to that, the next order of business will be to hand out some land. Braj can have Helgum and, yeah, these three other counties because that'll bring him to his domain limit. Unfortunately, I can't give Dag anything because he's only entitled to my primary holdings and we're not ready to let go of those just yet. So let's go and grab somebody with low intrigue, you know, <laughs> in case we need to capture them. Here you go, Lord Mayor Imund. He's a lunatic with no family. Perfect. Go ahead and take Gotland. Now we're going to go ahead and give Hollingsland to this random dude, Aki. Nice. We're at five out of five personal holdings and the kingdom is coming along. Not how I envisioned it though, but we're making it work. Speaking of, I just thought diplomacy has that perk Ducal Conquest. Yeah, 20% title creation discount. That would actually be pretty useful since we've got to create these duchies. Though I'm really hoping that also applies to the custom kingdom decision. <laughs> Look at this. We've got some raiders. My levy knows the drill. Oh yeah, you know, I also forgot we'd inherit some problems. It looks like there's an independence faction forming and they've got 172% of our military strength. We'll just shuffle around some of our counselors and see if we can get them happy. Hmm, Count Toke is actually pretty close, but I may not cut it. It also appears he makes up for the majority of this percentage, so let's see if we can marry a child to one of his for an alliance. Unfortunately, we don't have any more eligible children, which makes me think it was a bit impulsive to have taken that 51-year-old dwarf as concubine. No worries, for three gold, we can go ahead and get the younger Yus Saka. Well, 33 isn't too old, but <laughs> we need them for alliances and fast, so we'll make do with what we've got. Nice! Conveniently, this raid in Dallasburg's login had finished and it allowed me to snatch 49 gold from the raiders. Even with that, I don't think we're going to have any means of preventing this independence war. Might as well get some raiding done. We'll go ahead and march into Hydemork and watch as the faction swells to over 200%. Alright, maybe we should try and do something with our spy master. We're going to try and dig up some dirt on the vassals by searching for secrets in the capital. A strong hook could help us here. I might be getting a little bit greedy here, but there's another 20 gold. And at the cost of 100 troops, seems good enough for me. It is justified as we might need some mercs in the near future. Oh. oh, what did I get myself into? My dwarf concubine has a taste for human flesh. You know, that tension of whether or not that playful bite was hot or aggressive has a bit more context now. <laughs> oh well. 
As our raid finishes up, we manage to grab a valuable prisoner. The full 50 gold ransom is not an option, and I don't really want to wait, so 39 will do. And with those raiders finally home and an additional 37 gold, we are swimming in it. The main concern now is this looming independence war. Given the strongest of the faction is situated in these three counties to the south, I think it's best we move our troops out over there to possibly catch them before they gather and group up. <laughs> yep, looks like we actually won't have any time for that. The demand for independence starts now. Best thing to do here is try and prevent the enemy from grouping up, and we may be able to do that as we arrive in Skara. Unfortunately though, we are unable to catch and we're gonna have to continue chasing them up north into Yundog. With some clever shuffling of commanders, it seems we've closed the gap and we should be able to catch the back half of their armies in Kinda. Yep, looking good. Hey, what's the deal with this war score? Occupied territories. Yeah, that, that must be because we don't hold any of their lands. We're gonna correct that soon enough though. First, we're going to go ahead and move into Moray as our allies have arrived to support us. As we approach, you can see the enemy running. This is always a good sign. An easy catch forces the southern troops to turn around in hopes to reinforce, but that's not happening. Oh, <laughs> hello there, Count Tok. Thanks for helping things along. That valuable capture quickly shoots us up to 64% war score. <laughs> Amazing. Our allies haven't wasted any time either. I'm on it too, guys. We'll just quickly crush them. <laughs> oh my god. Two for two. Two fights, two valuable prisoners. Looks like Count Toke's son is cut from the same cloth as his father and finds himself captured. Now we're cruising. 89% war score. Looks like one more siege will close this out. Let's go ahead and sit on Seved. Actually, given there are some forces to the north, we're going to go ahead and split off a siege and send some fighters up by sea. Despite the disembark penalty, the green indicator and the fact that they're retreating is always a good sign. Not so fast, kiddos. That battle should buy us some time and prevent any more offense for a bit, which is good because that 17% is killing us. See, <laughs> my wife knows the stakes here. She's taking extra care of her husband. Thanks, Saga. Rub my back as we watch Sevid fall. And, uh... Wait, what? Why are we not done with this? I must be missing something. Do they actually control any territory? What? What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Oh, okay, yeah. Maybe it just takes some time. Well then, guys, let this be a cold, hard lesson. I'm your liege, and you shall heed my demands from yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> nice. As we finish off this episode, I've got one last order of business. As it appears, Linnea is still threatening to leave, and I can't effectively jail her, so maybe a bit of seduction can convince her otherwise. Check it out, we are one huge duke. Honestly, I did not expect to destroy the Sweden title, but it makes sense. It doesn't matter how many times I play this game, there's always an interaction like this that'll pop up when I least expect it. In any case, we're gonna have to try and figure out where to proceed from here. In the next episode, we can potentially grab five more counties or go ahead and create some duchies given we've got vassals in prison and they'll pay well for ransom. Hopefully we can put off raiding for a bit, but <laughs> that's never an option. In any case, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.